this is my long-term review of my 350Z. I've owned this 350Z for about a year and a half now. I've put about 16,000 miles on it. And some of you are saying that's not a lot, but I really don't care what you say. I'm doing this review to give people who are interested in 350Zs a better idea of what to expect over the long haul. A little spoiler, uh, there's nothing to worry about. So just to touch up on what exact 350Z this is, this is a 2006 with the rev up motor in it. The rev up is not the same as the HR motor. Some of you guys in my car review video said some mean nasty things about me because you thought I called it the rev up and you guys called it a DE. The rev up is a DE and it's not an HR. HR is totally different from this. But some, some people think they're geniuses, you know, keyboard warriors, am I right? So the difference with this is it's a regular single intake engine. They beefed up the bottom end, they beefed up the oil pump, they gave it very, uh, cam phases on the exhaust side. It only had it on the intake beforehand. Uh, a little bit of a different plenum design, different air box design. Uh, just little things that bump the power out, put up to uh, 300 horsepower, and the car revs up to 7,000 RPM. Uh, they fixed the transmission uh, before they had a gnarly third gear grind. Uh, completely updated and revised transmission, no issues now compared to the 03 to 05 models. Along with the drivetrain changes, we got little minor changes with the car as well. Uh, the headlights were changed, the taillights were our LED taillights now. So, my 06 is known for having an oil consumption issue. I am lucky and I don't have it. When I first bought this car, I went 4,000 miles without checking the oil. Or I mean checking it, but you know, without topping it off. After 4,000 miles, I finally burned the court. The oil consumption issue consists of people doing a thousand miles and burning a quart every thousand miles. So sometimes you're lucky when you buy this car and you don't have the oil consumption issue. Sometimes the last owner could have fixed it at the dealership. They could have either paid or got it uh, fixed under a recall. So for those of you looking at an 06 model, the recall is pretty much Nissan will fix it if the car is under 60,000 miles and it's showing the oil consumption issue. Uh, you really got to fight for it. They're not just going to hand out a free engine like nothing. So you gotta fight them for it if you do have one under 60,000 miles and it does burn oil. Otherwise, if you're not burning oil or you're able to get it fixed, this is probably the most solid out of all of the 350Zs. From the 16,000 miles of owning this, I've driven it through Utah's snowy roads, road trip to California, done countless track events and autocross events, and including one drift event. Uh, I've driven in the California desert, 120, 130 degree uh, summer temps. It's been through a lot, this car. And the car still purrs like the day I bought it. Now, about six months into it, I finally started modifying it. And the first thing I did when I bought the car is put some sticky tires on it. Uh, sticky race tires are good for racing on. They don't last very long if you daily on them. So, I bought another set of wheels and left my stock wheels in my race set. I also bought an exhaust for this car just because I wanted more noise. Uh, it's really a shame to keep these cars corked. I love the way a single exit sounds on this car. It's probably one of my like top five best sounding cars in the world. The way a single exit sounds on a VQ. Personally, I went with a little bit of a cheaper stainless steel one instead of a Tomei Titanium. I saved up for a Tomei. I got it. I was ready to buy it. And I thought about it and I realized, you know, a lot of people are changing the mufflers out because they break and they get holes in them. And uh, looking at just my driveway alone, let alone the rest of the roads in Utah, I know that Tomei would have had a hole in it within a few months. So I opted for a Megan Racing stainless steel one. Uh, still sounds great. It's pretty sturdy and the quality is amazing on it. Uh, you really can't, can't go wrong with this. Can't go wrong with that part. I ditched the intake the car had. I found a stock 06 uh, airbox. And, you know, I lost the noise. I really missed the noise, but it doesn't heat so cool. So when I was in California, you would like, you put your hand on the, you, you'd feel like a lag of power when you're sitting in traffic. And you put your hand on the intake and burn your hand. You'd have the wire mesh of the intake on your hand. Uh, that's when I realized, you know what, the stock airbox would keep it the coolest. So, sacrifice the noise to keep the intake cool. There are, uh, some new intake options coming out that are making power. Three and a half and four inch intakes are the new thing. I might experiment with it myself. 
but that's for another time. Uh, I, I did brakes, I went to stop tech sport pads. They're probably not the most aggressive compound, but they're a good compromise for street and track. So if you're looking into buying this car, one thing you need to consider is maintenance. Uh, this car is not maintenance intensive at all. You can run this car in corn oil and it'll be okay. I've always changed it with Mobile One Oil. Originally I did 530. I went to a 040 just to handle a little more heat and that the car seems to like it a lot. Uh, the, honestly, the maintenance of this is like the maintenance of like a Honda or Toyota, you know, Toyota Corolla. It really is a reliable car and it's really solid. The only other major thing I've ever had to do to this car is replace the clutch disc. Ironically, the only thing massive that had to be done in this car is the clutch system. Uh, so this was in a one owner car when I bought it. I bought it from the original owner in California and they always took it to the Nissan dealership. Going through service records, this clutch was never changed. Pulled off an OEM Nissan part at 120,000 miles roughly. So you know, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna be mad about that mileage on the stock clutch. Got another OEM clutch and installed it. Uh, one thing to keep in mind if you, a clutch will eventually go out in this car if it hasn't been changed. This car has a dual mass flywheel. Dual mass flywheels can't be turned like normal flywheels. Most shops can't do it for you. The option is get a new dual mass, which is $900 to $1,000, it's expensive. Or get a lightweight flywheel, but sometimes lightweight flywheels have drivability issues. Your best option is really to get, uh, Z1 makes a solid flywheel that isn't too lightweight that you get into drivability issues. Since I daily this car, let's go into cost of ownership. So we talked about maintenance and what I've had to do. I haven't really had to do much other than regular oil changes. Uh, fuel economy. Fuel isn't that bad for what kind of car you get. If you're nice, we're not gonna we're not gonna count driving like an asshole. If you're nice to the car, you get about 20 city, and I get about 30 highway as well. That's not bad for this kind of car. Insurance for me. I am. Um, I bought this car. I was 20 years old. Insurance, full coverage, deductibles, $500 flat throughout in Utah. I pay $109 a month. That's not bad for a car like this. I know people paying more for sedans. And honestly, this car is just as fun to drive in Canyon as the day I bought it. With the new modifications, it makes it better and faster, but you still get that joy of driving from the car. You still get that fun of just being on the threshold of grip and ripping through corners and hearing the car sing to 7,000 RPM. The car still does that, just as good as the day I bought it. If you're looking for a car that's gonna be a powerhouse, this isn't your car. If you're looking for a car that you can turn the key and drive every day and drive it hard, this is your car. And what, what this car does best is driving. You get in, you drive it, you go. You drive it in a canyon, the car just asks for more, it wants more, give it more, stop starving it, it wants more. Drive it hard, drive it fast, the car can take it. When you start to do the supporting mods for driving, you really bring out the beast in this car. You want to modify this car for, make, just make driving more exhilarating, make racing better, etc. This isn't a car you're going to take to Mexico and pull people on. This is a car you can go to autocross to the track and, uh, make the Porsche guys mad that a Nissan beat them. It's a driving machine. You can throw anything at it, they'll take it. I know people who've even rallied this car before. If you're thinking about getting a 350Z, and you're the kind of person that just wants a car you can drive, still have good aftermarket support if you did want to modify, and have a car with a lot of potential on the track, in the canyons, a lot of potential for driving, having fun with, this is the car you need to buy. Cost is cheap. These are just these are still going down in value, so don't look at this as any kind of financial investment. I didn't. You're gonna lose money on this car until they're all wrecked and they become like 240s. But who cares about the value when you buy this car? You're not gonna want to sell this car. You're gonna want to drive it more and more. And there won't be a reason for you to need to sell it. It's not gonna be one of those cars that I just work on it too much. I need to get rid of it because I'm sick of working on it. You're not going to have that with this car. If you're one of the like 1% that did, I'm sorry. You've got a bad car. Someone before you didn't take care of it. But if you look for a car that's been well taken care of, this car will just love you back. There are a few little things I want to mention about this car that you don't. 
you don't really notice just driving it a couple times. Uh, VDC is annoying. Turn it off at all times. Uh, the radio kind of sucks if you want to play your own music. Uh, upgrade it. It's not that hard. It's not that expensive. Uh, the trunk room's a little shitty. I mean, if you're if you're packing a bunch of little things, good. You want to pack something big, you're SOL. Like for example, when I had to pick up my 275s from FedEx, I couldn't fit it in the trunk. I wouldn't fit it in the strut bar, so I had to position it awkwardly and leave the trunk hanging open a little bit. Uh, and then the other one had to sit in the passenger seat with me. And yeah, yeah, just little things that annoy you with this car. But there's nothing that's a deal breaker, really. Unless you need a lot of trunk room, then why are you looking at sports cars? Sometimes when I'm on the track or autocross, I'll get into power, and I'll hear the inside wheel spin for a little bit, and then I'll hook and go. It's like turbo lag for your differential. We don't want that. If you're gonna get hardcore into racing, uh, look for a base model and get an LSD. If not though, the Viscus gets the job done. Don't get me wrong, it still locks. It's just not optimal, but it's it, it, you don't have any of the drawbacks a good LSD or uh, well the diff has when you're uh, driving around town, so it works out for that. Um, actually at the drift event I was at, I didn't have any issues with the VLSD not wanting to lock, except for you could notice a little bit on initiation, but if you were like hucking it in with momentum, you wouldn't notice anyway, because the momentum of the car is swinging the car around, not the power. Once the car is sideways, it was good enough. I've seen people drifting these cars with the VLSD and uh, they'll, they'll say they'll lose the drift because the VLSD just starts spinning the inside wheel. I never had that problem. So it's, the VLSD is, the best way to describe it is good enough. It's good enough. There's a lot better, but it's good enough. One thing I wish this car could do a little better, I want more popping out the exhaust. And one thing that's weird is this car has, it does this little throttle hang thing. You rev it up, the throttle will hang for a second. And you get no like good like crackly noises when you're letting off into deceleration. And uh, the throttle hang happens because uh, basically what happens is drive by wire. And what was happening is you snap the throttle shut and the car would go lean for a second. And this lean condition would create nitrogen gas. Uh, now to manufacturers, nitrogen gas is bad because the EPA doesn't like that for good reason. So for the fix for the time was when you let off the gas, the throttle plate, when it's shut, it's shut and stay open just a little bit. So that way it doesn't go straight to that lean condition and then it shuts all the way. That way it doesn't cause a lean condition and doesn't create nitrogen. Uh, you can get the car tuned and get rid of that and it's on my plan to do that eventually. Seeing this from a long-term perspective, I still wouldn't recommend this as a first car for anyone. It's fun, don't get me wrong, but it's really easy to get into trouble with. And they're cheap, yes I know. Unless you're the 16 year old that actually is responsible. You're very far and few in between. I would not recommend this. I'd recommend a slower car. This would be a good second sports car. Just because for your first car, this is going to feel like a very fast car to you. And uh, corners are going to come up to you very quick and your brakes are not. But, you know, that's my personal opinion. Everyone's going to think something different on that one. Anyway, I hope you guys like this long term review video. Uh, I think I nailed every con every topic to talk about. Uh, if you guys have any more questions about this car and what it's like to own that I missed, uh, leave a comment below and I'll reply as speedily as possible. Anyway, thanks for watching guys.